In this video, we're going to find the total distance traveled by a vehicle by numerically integrating a dataset. From basic physics, you should know that the total distance is just the integral of the velocity versus time curve. Technically, it's the integral of the absolute value of the velocity, but we'll ignore that for now. If this is a velocity time curve, the total distance you travel would just be the entire area under the curve. You could set up your integral and solve it analytically, but that doesn't always work. In practice, we usually collect a series of discrete data points like the ones in this table. We can't analytically integrate this. Could we fit a curve to these points and then integrate that expression? Sure, but once again, that's not always a valid approach. Anyways, let's work with the data we have to compute the total distance. Before we switch to MATLAB, I should mention that this data table is contained in the velocity versus time.mat file linked in the video description. Okay, let's move to MATLAB. First, let's load the data with the load command. Whenever you're given data, you should always plot it immediately. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code so that we can visualize the data. You might have noticed at the beginning of the video that the 11 data points are unequally spaced. If you didn't catch it then, hopefully it's clear now. This is one reason why you should always plot your data. We have to use a trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data to integrate. This code will be slightly harder to write than just the composite trapezoid rule because it's more generalized, but the logic is still the same. Let's write our own function which does this, so jump to the bottom of the script. This function is called myTrap. It takes two input vectors, x and y, and returns i, which is the integral estimate. This is all summarized in the comments below. We're going to use a for loop to iterate through each pair of data points and apply the trapezoid rule on that pair. Before the for loop, we need to initialize our output i. Let's examine our loop. We start the loop counter at 1 and iterate length x minus 1 times. This statement here is a trapezoid rule applied to one segment. This represents the base, and this represents the average height. The i plus 1 statements here and here are why we need to iterate until length x minus 1. If we just did length of x, we would run into an out of bounds error. Plus, this should make sense since you form n-1 trapezoids for n data points. This code works for both the trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data and the composite trapezoid rule. This shouldn't surprise you since the two methods follow the exact same process. Our function is general enough to apply to both cases, which is nice. You should strive to make your code as general as possible so it's as versatile as possible. Now we can call the function. I'm going to copy the function header minus the function keyword and paste it right under the second section of our script. Let's make some notation changes. We need to replace x with t, since t is our independent variable, and y with v, since v is the dependent variable. Let's also replace i with something a little more descriptive. If we run the code, we get about 64.6. .6. This means we drove a total distance of 64.6 .6 meters. How do we know if this is right? We should probably validate our answer. 
Fortunately, there's a built-in function called trapz, which we can use to cross-check. I won't go over it here, but I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description. Please pause the video to read it in its entirety if you haven't done so already. After we run the code, we see that our answers match. Finally, let's do a quick back-of-the-envelope calculation. A back-of-the-envelope calculation is an informal mathematical computation often performed on scrap paper like the back of an envelope, hence its namesake. A back-of-the-envelope calculation uses estimated or rounded numbers to quickly develop a ballpark figure. For this problem, let's just approximate the total area under this curve with a single rectangle. The base will obviously go from 0 to 10. Let's use the average height of the data as the height of our rectangle. For good measure, let's use the yLine command to draw the average height on the plot. Uncomment the line with the patch command to better visualize the entire rectangle. This rectangle represents a very crude approximation of the area under the curve. The area of this rectangle is just the base times the height. We're off by about 3%, which seems surprisingly good if you look at the rectangle compared to the data points. From 0 to about 5, we grossly overestimate the integral, but from about 5 to 10, we grossly underestimate, so it all averages out. I recommend doing these back-of-the-envelope calculations whenever possible as a sanity check. That's it for this video. To recap, we wrote a trapezoidal rule function which works for both equally and unequally spaced data, and applied it to a data set to calculate the total distance traveled by a vehicle. See you soon.